Holy Spirit, we just invite you. Let's just take the next 30 seconds. I just, oh, I already feel them in the room. Just take the next 30 seconds and start praying. If you have a prayer language, start using it. If you don't, just say his name. Just say Jesus. But just start praying. The next 30 seconds. This is worship. Come on, enter in. Enter in. Jesus. Jesus. Come. Jesus. We love you. Jesus. We worship Jesus. Come, Holy Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, come on, keep praying, keep praying. This is a small group, but this is a mighty group of God. Jesus is in the room, and we want to encounter him this morning, so just come on. Pray like he's in the room, because he is. Come on. I have this burning on my heart. I spent, thank you for everyone who's been praying for me. I've been battling bronchitis. But I spent Friday in the Word. There's nothing better than the Word. There's nothing better than just Jesus. And where God took me is this. In 1 Corinthians 2, this is Paul talking. When I came to you, brothers, and I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstrations of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul, who was a Pharisee, who knew scripture, who knew everything, not everything, but he knew a lot. He had one thing to give, though. He had one thing to give. A lot of times we come to church and we come to Jesus and we want, to, we want to do all these things. God, I've got all these things to give. And he says, okay, good, give them up. Give them up. Because there's one thing that's needed. There's just Jesus. There's just Jesus. And it's not... <laughs> there's this thing going on in churches in America today where they're taking crosses out because they offend people. And Paul says, I seek to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Jesus without the cross is just a really good teacher. Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers, one of our first presidents, and I pray he changed his mind before the end, but it's it's written down that he he didn't believe Jesus was the son of God. He just but he said he was the best moral teacher ever. Jesus without the cross is just a good teacher. And people say, well, I don't want to talk about that because that's kind of, that was kind of gross. That wasn't very pretty. I just want to talk about him risen. Risen Jesus has nail scarred hands. He's got nailed scarred feet. The cross wasn't a, a beautiful scene. Salvation and the healing it brings is. Paul says, I He says, I was with you with weakness and fear and much trembling, meaning I don't don't have fancy things to say. I've got one message. I I don't have to come up with gimmicks. I don't have to come up with fancy ways to say it. There was the Son of God, the Word at the beginning. He came. He lived. Spirit empowered life. And he was taken, beaten, and bloodied. If you research how Jesus was 
was, was beaten and bloodied. It's, it's not pretty. It's not a beautiful imagery. Watch the passion of the Christ. It's the closest we'll get this side of heaven of knowing what it was like. His bones were exposed. His organs were probably exposed. He was unrecognizable. That's the Jesus he's saying, I seek to know nothing but Christ and Christ crucified. That's the Jesus. That's the Jesus. That's the Jesus the world needs. He's here to this morning. I know we've changed things up and everything's different, but he's here this morning. Paul said, I seek to know nothing but Christ crucified. Now, Paul wasn't walking around with the book of John, with the gospel of John. He didn't, the New Testament wasn't written. I mean, he wrote half of it. It wasn't there yet. But what he did know is Isaiah. Do you know all scripture points to Jesus? All scripture. All scripture. You know why we know that? Because Jesus said so. He said so. He said so in Luke. He's walking to the road to Emmaus, and, he, and was it not necessary for the, that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. It all points to him. Paul didn't have the Gospel of John, but he had Isaiah. And Isaiah talked about Jesus 700 years before it happened. 700 years before it happened, he said he would be pierced for our transgressions. 700 years before it happened, he said, by his blood we are healed. There is a promise in worshiping God. There is a promise in making him everything. This is the Jesus you need to encounter today. I don't care if you've been saved 50 years or five minutes. We don't graduate from this gospel. We don't move on from this gospel. There is nothing higher than Jesus and knowing Jesus and Christ crucified. This is it. And the road just gets more narrow. God's been putting that in my heart lately. The more you seek to know him, he didn't come to add things to you. He came to take things away so that you would just focus on him. And his promises are that you'll have all you need. Everything you need. But when we start taking crosses out of the church... We start losing the awe of God. Another way to say that is the fear of the Lord. And we don't always like that phrase, fear of the Lord, because we think, why would I be scared of God? You know, he's, that's, my, that's my dad. I love my earthly father. He's a great man, but I always knew he could whoop me. But that he wasn't going to because he has this thing called meekness. Do you know Jesus is meek? you know what meekness means? It doesn't mean weakness. They rhyme, but they don't go together. Meekness is having strength with restraint. And Jesus said the meek will inherit the earth. That's what God has. When we, we start losing the awe of God, we start losing promises. In Psalm 34, I'm, I'm not going to try and go too long, but I just feel God burning on his word. You feel him burning on his word? I got two of you, good. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all, say all, all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. This morning, we're going to go into worship, and he just wants to encounter you. Some of you came in with physical ailments. You came in with mental issues. You came in with 
needs and he knows them and he's the only solution. But as I like to say, if you focus on his hand, what you want him to give you, you're gonna miss out on his face. You're gonna miss out on seeing him. I wanna see Jesus this morning. I wanna see Jesus this morning. I'm gonna pray. I just, there's just this burning to come to know Jesus more this morning. This isn't typical Sunday. I said that to the worship team and they said, what else is new? This isn't typical Sunday. He wants it all. He wants all of you because he's got everything you need. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I don't know. I'm just going to, fair warn, I don't know what this does for kids' church when, when Rachel comes to get them. <laughs> she comes to get them. But we want these kids to know Christ crucified too. Amen? There's not an age limit. Amen? There's one message. It's Jesus. Here's something for you. There's one message from heaven. It's Jesus. There's one message from God. It's Jesus. So Jesus, this morning, we break off distraction. Whatever we came in with, God, we make you bigger. We make you bigger, Jesus. We make you bigger than sickness. We make you bigger than depression. We make you bigger than financial needs. We say by your blood we have been redeemed and by your stripes we have been healed. That's always been your plan, Jesus. And all you ask is that we worship you. All you ask is that we worship you. Worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I can't fulfill the number of my days, Jesus. I can't force sickness out of my body. But worshiping you changes everything. Knowing Christ and Christ crucified changes everything. So Jesus, open our eyes this morning. Open our eyes to the Christ crucified. We have nothing but you, Jesus.